Hello and welcome back. I'm here today with a 2022 BMW iX X-Drive 50. We're gonna give this guy the inside EV's 70 mile an hour highway range test. I'm charging it up to 100% before I hop out onto the highway and drive in long loops to see just how far this guy goes. I'm gonna hop in the car now. We're gonna talk a little bit about what we do to set up these range tests so it's fair and we can compare vehicle to vehicle. But first, don't forget, please click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on the Inside EVs YouTube channel. All right, so while I'm waiting for the car to top off, we're at like 99% state of charge now, so it's only going to be a couple of minutes. The interesting thing is the iX is telling me at 99% state of charge, the trip estimator is good for 373 miles. Yeah, I don't think we'll be going that far today. Uh, we've been surprised before, but I don't think I'm gonna be surprised that much. This version of the iX, this has the 20 inch wheels. It's the most efficient version that this comes in. I specifically asked BMW to give me the one that's set up the best for range. This is EPA range rated at 324 miles per charge. Now there is a uh, 21 inch wheel option and a 22 inch wheel option. And the interesting thing is typically as you go up scale with the wheels, as the wheels get bigger, usually the estimated range gets reduced. But with BMW, it's weird with the iX, the longest range version is the 20 inch wheels as you would expect. But then when you go to the 21 inch wheels, the EPA range rating is 305 miles. But then when you go up to the 22 inch wheels, it's 315 miles. So you've got 324 for the 20 inch wheels, then 305 for the 21 inch wheels, then 315 for the 22 inch wheels. So I guess the 21 inch wheels are the least aerodynamic and you're getting a range penalty for that. So I think that's interesting and uh, noteworthy for sure. Now we're talking about the combined EPA range rating because the highway EPA range rating for the iX isn't published. It's disappointing because we always used to be able to get the city, the highway, and the combined EPA range rating for the electric vehicles. And when we did these range tests, we would talk about the highway range rating because we're really doing highway range tests at a constant 70 miles an hour. But now, for some reason, starting just a few months ago, the EPA stopped publishing uh, much of the, the city and highway range ratings, and they just produce the combined EPA range rating. So that's what we're talking about here. 324 miles is the combined EPA range rating for this version of the iX. We would expect the highway range rating to be somewhere about 8% lower than that. So, you know, maybe right around 300 miles if we could get that breakout. So that's kind of what I'm shooting for here today. Somewhere around 300 miles, I'll be super happy with. Now, this vehicle has a 111.5 kilowatt hour battery pack. And of that Okay, 100%, we're fully charged. 111.5 kilowatt hour battery pack, and of that, 105.2 kilowatt hour is usable. So that's what I have to work with today, uh, 105 kilowatt hour. So if I average somewhere around three miles per kilowatt hour, maybe slightly less than that, I should be able to hit that 300 mile mark. We won't know until we get onto the highway, which we're gonna be doing momentarily. But I like to talk a little bit about what we do to set the vehicles up. The first thing I always do is set the tire pressure to the manufacturer's recommended tire pressure. And I do that when the vehicle is cold, either the night before or the morning of. I did it early this morning. So we're, we're dialed in perfectly. The tires are perfectly set to what the manufacturer recommends. Now, when I start the range test, I'm gonna reset the trip meter. I'm gonna put it in the most efficient driving mode. The interesting thing for the i3 that mode is called i3 uh, the ix i've owned two bmw i3 so i guess my mind is in in i3 mode uh for the ix it's called efficient driving mode so there's normal there's sport and then efficient bmw went out of their usual eco pro is what typically is the most efficient driving modes and you hear that beep 
the car has hand gestures. As I'm moving my hands, it thought that I wanted to do something. So I'm gonna have to keep my hands down here. Um, so we'll put in the efficient driving mode and then we're gonna set the climate control to 68 degrees and put it on fan setting one. That's what I always do. Uh, that shouldn't be a problem today. That should maintain nice temperature in here because right now it's about 60 degrees. It's gonna get up to about 70 degrees today. So it's not perfect range weather, but it's very good range weather. So I think we're gonna have a good result. I also am able to turn the uh, moon roof here, it has a big panoramic glass roof uh, into opaque setting, which uh, it's a really cool feature here on the iX. You can have clear glass or you can press a button up here and the glass automatically just becomes opaque. So it reduces the amount of uh, heat that comes into the cabin. I'm going to have it set to that today. So I'm not baking in here. We're going to have nice direct sunlight and that'll allow the, uh, the climate control system to not have to work quite as hard. All right, I'm going to unplug now. We're going to head out onto the highway. There's the uh, hand gesture again. I just, I can't, I'm from New Jersey. I talk with my hands. I can't help that. Uh, we're going to head out onto the highway start driving up and down the turnpike in long loops and we'll check back in once we're out on the highway and we test the vehicle to uh, GPS. We always make sure we're going a true 70 miles an hour. So I have a couple of GPS apps. We'll test them out and then we'll set the cruise control to a true 70 miles an hour. So we're out on the New Jersey turnpike cruising along at 70 miles an hour and with the IX to be driving at 70 miles an hour, I need to have the cruise control set at about 73 miles an hour. Actually, it's a little bit less. I have two different apps that I use to get the exact speed and both of them said when the stated speed on the car was 72.5 miles an hour, we were driving 70 miles an hour. So I can't set the cruise control at exactly 70 miles an hour. So what I'm gonna do is set it at 73 miles an hour, drive 20 or 30 minutes, drop it down to 72, do that back and forth until the range test is over. The interesting thing is I just did the Inside EV 70 mile an hour higher range test for the BMW i4 M50. That video is already up on the YouTube channel. And the exact same thing happened at 72.5 miles an hour was a true 70 miles an hour. So BMW has been known and most of the German manufacturers actually uh, have the speedometers run fast and uh, but the interesting thing is for both of these cars it was exactly the same and speaking of the i4 we outperformed the EPA range rating on that vehicle the EPA range rating was 227 miles the combined EPA range rating and we actually ended up going 239 miles which is fantastic for that car and that is the least efficient version of the i4 I had the all-wheel drive m50 with the biggest wheels the least efficient version. We're gonna to try to get a hold of the rear wheel drive I4 uh, and with the optimal, the, the perfect wheel setup to do and uh, do the range test again. That vehicle's EPA range rated at 301 miles. So we might break 300 miles uh, on that if we get one. BMW said they're gonna to work to try to get one. They typically don't have a lot of the rear wheel drive versions in the media fleets when the vehicles also offered in all wheel drive. Uh, so get back to the IX, we're about 30 miles in now. We're averaging over three miles per kilowatt hour. So we're on pace to break 300 miles, still super early. We're only a 10th of the way in, uh, but so far early indications are good. Uh, another thing is wind. So I checked my wind apps. Wind is not a problem, not yet at least. Things can change during the range test. But right now there's only about a two mile an hour wind coming from the Northwest. So that really is uh, currently not an issue at all. Hopefully it won't uh, turn into an issue later. Temperature, we're up to 65 degrees now. So it's, it's already jumped five degrees in the first half an hour of driving. So uh, we should be up at around 70 degrees pretty soon good range weather and uh, we'll go from there. The first check-in will be when we're at 75% state of charge and we've gone 25% of the range test. All right, first check-in. We're at 75% state of charge and so far we have gone, great Scott, 88 miles. Always wanted to do something like that. Anyway, yeah, 88 miles, that's nuts. We're at a consumption rate of 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour. However, I've seen it bounce between 3.3 and 3.2. So 
probably somewhere around 3.25. The uh, IX only gives you one point after the decimal point, so uh, I don't know if it's 3.25, 3.28, or whatever, uh, but we have been bouncing between 3.3 and 3.2, and that makes sense because if we were to go 88 miles in each of the four quarters of this trip, we'd finish up with somewhere around 350 miles, and we would need uh, almost 3.3, or right around 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour to do that with a pack that has 105.2 kilowatt hour of usable energy. So uh, that's fantastic. Um, it's gonna be a long day here on the New Jersey Turnpike for me. So much for getting home early this Sunday afternoon. I started out nice and early. I was on the road at like 6.15 to get to the charging station and charge her up. I was hoping maybe to get back this afternoon, but you know, it looks like there's gonna be a lot of driving today. And uh, quite honestly, that's the longest I've ever gone in the first quarter of a range test, except for the Lucid Air range test, which ended up with uh, 500 miles driven. Now, we're not going to go that far, but it's a huge win if we pass the EPA range rating of 324 miles uh, per charge. And it's not often we do that with the EVs. I did it with the BMW i4. So, you know, maybe BMW is you know, under promising and over delivering. It seems that way so far, but things can change. We've done these range tests enough to know that uh, the consumption rating changes on different legs of the trip. And, you know, you get different mileage on the different legs, but as it is, what a fantastic start, 88 miles in the first quarter. We'll check back in at 50% state of charge. Hopefully we're somewhere around 160, 170 miles if we are then you know, we're on course for uh, to crush the EPA range rating. See you in a few. All right, checking in at 50% state of charge. We're halfway home and we are at 169 miles driven. We didn't go quite as far in that second leg as we did in the first. We only went 81 miles compared to 88 miles before. So maybe the IX is coming down to earth a little bit and isn't gonna dramatically overperform its EPA range rating like it was looking like it was going to at first. We're only halfway there. We're still on a pace to exceed the EPA range rating, but the second half is gonna tell the rest of the story. Our consumption rating is also down to 3.1 miles per kilowatt hour from the 3.3 and 3.2 I was seeing in the first quarter of the trip. Could be because I turned around and now the wind, it's only two to three miles an hour, but now it's more of a headwind, whereas earlier on it was kind of a tailwind. So that's enough to make that much of a difference uh, just to knock off you know, six or seven miles of range per every 25% of the battery. So we'll see, now I've turned around and I'm heading in the opposite direction again, the original direction. So I have kind of a little bit of a tailwind, but it's down to one and a half miles an hour now. I keep checking my wind app. So shouldn't play that big of a role, but at least it's not a headwind. I'm expecting to do a little bit better from 50% to 25%. We'll check back in and let you know. We're at the final check-in before the range test is completed. We're at 25% state of charge. We have driven 255 miles and our consumption rating is back up to 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour. I was kind of thinking that that was going to happen because once we change direction, we do these big long loops when we do our range tests and that's to help offset any change of elevation as well as any effect the wind can have. And it seems like that is working today because we now took in 86 miles in that quarter as opposed to 81 from 75 to 50 percent now we did do 88 miles in the first 25 percent but now we're back up to 86 so we're at 255 miles driven an overall consumption rate of 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour if that holds we'll end up with about 340 miles and the epa range rating is 324 you can do the math far exceeding the EPA range rating, I think by about 5%, which maybe not coincidentally is what I exceeded the EPA range rating when I did the BMW i4 M50 70 mile an hour highway range test. We beat the EPA range rating by 5%. 
and it looks like we're kind of on course to do that again. So this might not be a coincidence. It could be BMW, you know, nerfing the uh, EPA range rating and of under promising and over delivering. Now, one of the things that I think a lot of people don't understand, the EPA doesn't test the cars. The manufacturer tests the cars and provides all of that data to the EPA. The EPA can then te uh, test the cars to just make sure the manufacturer didn't make any mistakes or didn't try to uh, exaggerate the mileage claim. They do that for the gas vehicles as well for electric vehicles. So the manufacturer is allowed to offer a lower EPA range rating than what their official testing provided. They can do that. They can't offer a greater range rating. The EPA won't allow that. But they can provide the documents to the EPA and say, look, uh, the car can actually go this far, but we're going to shave a few miles off of that because we want to be conservative. We don't want our customers to feel like they uh, didn't get what they bargained for because as everyone knows, in different weather conditions, in different driving conditions, your mileage is going to vary. And many people, especially in cold weather areas, they're not going to see the EPA range rating during normal driving. So some manufacturers, Ford's one of them, they derate their EPA range ratings so that the customers aren't surprised and disappointed when the vehicle can't attain it under normal driving. So it's possible BMW is doing that because these, the i4 and now the iX are both doing fantastic jobs on our 70 mile an hour highway range test. And don't forget, the EPA range rating isn't done at 70 miles an hour, it's done at slower speed. So for us to reach it at a constant 70 miles an hour, that means if I were to actually follow the EPA range protocol, I would even do better. So yeah, I think that this is a true 300 mile electric vehicle, which is something because it's a big, large SUV, uh, heavy. Uh, yes, it has a big battery, 111 kilowatt hour, but uh, it's, it's actually pretty efficient considering this package. It's much more efficient than say an Audi e-tron. And this is a bigger vehicle than the e-tron. So BMW did a really good job with the iX. We're going to check back in when we're done and we'll talk about the final results then. All right. We're here at the DC Fast Charging Station, about to plug in. We're gonna record a full zero to 100% DC Fast Charging Session. Well, since we got the car down to zero, why not do that? But I know you wanna hear about the range test. So, the last leg was awesome. Little bit better than the first quarter. We actually did 90 miles in that last 25%, finished up with 340 five miles. We crushed the EPA range rating of 324 miles. I'll tell you, the iX is a great road tripping car. It actually is a really good DC fast charging electric vehicle also. We're going to do a full 0 to 100% DC fast charge analysis. That video is going to be up in about a week, week and a half after the range test video will be up. So you'll be able to check that out soon. But I tell you, the iX is a super comfortable car to drive in. I could do a coast to coast drive in this baby any day of the week, I would love it. The re regenerative braking system works really well. There's four different settings, uh, plus the driving B mode, which puts it into real, a true one pedal driving situation. So you really have aggressive regen, pulls you down to a stop, holds it there. I tell you, BMW has a really good regenerative braking system. You can adjust between like a mild, a medium, and a strong, and then there's adaptive regenerative braking, which I used for this whole trip, and it really uses the ADAS system for um, braking, and instead of using the friction brakes, it does all regenerative braking, so it recuperates as much energy as possible. I'm sure that added to the fact that we were able to go 345 miles here today. What a great showing for the iX. Uh, I'm gonna definitely try to get a hold of a different version of this. This was the one with the best range rating, 324 miles. But the one with the 19 inch, I mean the, excuse me, the 21 inch wheels has a 305 mile range rating. That's the worst range rating of any of the iXs. We're gonna try to get a hold of one of those just for comparison to see just how much of a difference it makes. But in any event, 345 today, BMW iX xDrive 50 with the 20 inch wheels, super showing. That's it for the Inside EV 70 mile an hour highway range test. If you like what we're doing here, please subscribe to the channel, follow us on social media, all that good stuff so you don't miss any upcoming content. And thanks for watching.